What's up everyone, my name is Alex, I'm one of the co-founders of MyInvestingClub.com and I wanna let you guys know about something special we're doing for our viewers on YouTube. So the most common question we get asked is, you know, how do I start day trading? So what me and my mentor Bao did is we created a free two hour mentorship course for the brand new trader. It's gonna be available at MyInvestingClub.co. The link is gonna be right here. This is a free webinar that reveals our 12 secrets that every single brand new day trader should know before they start. I also wanna let you guys know about something that's very unique to MIC. So if you have any questions about trading or you're curious about trading or you don't know if MIC is the right fit for you, now you can text our head mentor, Tosh, whose number is gonna be right here, and he'll answer all the questions that you have in less than 24 hours. Thank you and enjoy the video. I was planning on bringing, you know, another, another mod here. Oh, fucking Joe's here too. I was planning on bringing another mod here uh, on, like maybe Harry or something, like and have like a three-way. I mean, we might, I mean, who knows? If we're all here, we, we, we might even just have a group. So today, like, uh, today was an awesome day um, in, the, in the market for shorts. And I, I want to kind of go over like the, the kind of state of the market that we've been in because um, it, it, it's definitely changed in the last, uh, in, the, in this last week. So I definitely want to go over some of that. Without further ado, let's get started. Today, we're going to go over the key traders of the week. I want to go over some of the charts that, um, that I think are kind of, you know, showing a shift in sentiment. We're going to go over the market sentiment. It's going to be a little heavier section this week. And then I want you guys, I mean, this would, this would be a fun voting session. I want you guys to pick, you know, you know, anything that you have questions about this week. You guys will all vote on a topic. So start thinking about something that you guys want to talk about, something that collectively you guys are really struggling with. And we'll, we'll, we'll give that, we'll give that some time. And then I want to go over all the bad habits that, that, that we have as, as, as traders. And then like, so I asked this question to everybody in weekend mentoring and we got some good answers on, you know, whether, you know, whether we know, whether or not we want question and answer kind of all at the end, sometimes in between, you know, sometimes in between or a little, or a little bit of both. And you guys voted for a little bit of both. So that's what we'll do. Okay. So I, I want to go over these two trades because these two trades, I kind of fucked up on. So I want to go over what I did wrong on these. And one of these, I did, I, I think I did it correctly. And the other one I fucked up on. So MRIN and Grill were both stocks that kind of surprised me. Both of them kind of let me, this is, these two stocks both kind of let me know that the market was into a more punishing market for the front side and a more rewarding punishment, uh, a more rewarding market for the back side. Um, these two stocks both surprised me with their range all the way back up to high a day. Uh, both of these stocks, I almost thought were going to be somewhat low hanging style, low hanging fruit kind of trades. Like this one barely... MRN barely had any volume, like we're less than 100K down here and we just grinds all the way back. What I did wrong with MRIN was I didn't cut it when, uh, I didn't cut it when my ads didn't, when, when, I, when I added to the position and I didn't get rewarded right away on the ad, I should have cut it like I did here. I shorted grill here, I covered it, you know, I, I, I put the shares back on and it ripped up and then I covered the dip because I knew that my range here, my idea of of covering this this lower high failed once we got this high and I covered it immediately but this is one thing that I fucked up on MRIN right? I just kept adding and this is a mistake that I had in the middle of the week that you know I'm, I'm, I'm ashamed of now but I mean it happens and so like this is where like I, I'm shorting into this into this range here and we get a little spike up fail and then I add on the dip and the second we come back uh, the second we don't just kind of fail right here I should have covered right here I should have covered right here, but I got stubborn with it. I let it go. I just didn't want to. The, the volume wasn't convincing enough for me to cover. Uh, and I just didn't respect the price action enough. And, you know, like I put one last ad, which shouldn't have even been on the table right here above high a day, cut it right away. So I didn't, you know, it's not like I lost much on this ad, but I shouldn't, you know, the, the trade should have been cut long ago when it's holding view up and it didn't on this red candle when it didn't tank, I really needed to, to cut the trade, but I didn't. So one of these was correct. And one of these was incorrect. And it, it stems from the fact that when I didn't, you know, when, when my, when my ad, my last ad here didn't get rewarded, I needed to downsize or take it off. But so, it, it's more like a grinding move, right? When you show that, I mean, right. and it's, I got, it's no good. I got caught in the grind. I definitely got caught in yeah. that grind and that doesn't happen to me very often. So a little disappointed in it. Low um, highs too. And you know, yeah, I got a little bit of stubborn with it. And you can see, I, I added this, like I was literally looking for a pullback on like this isn't that like fader of a, of a cover. Like I was literally waiting for one pull. And when I didn't get it here, like after this, I, I caught it right there. 
when this tank didn't happen, I should have I should have let it go. But you know, great cut though with risk management right there. Well, I feel this one I like. This one it's just larger than my average loss. Let's put it that yeah. way. Anyway, so PSCI was a trade I had earlier this oh, week. This, this is one, a good one, yeah. This one I really like. So one thing uh, that that Bao even touched on this today, and 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 I did the, I did I did the exact same thing on this trade that he mentioned today that he did on I forget which stock it was. It was uh, near the end of the day when it pushed view up. Oh, it was it was um, Mosey today. So like I, you, oh, I, I, it cut off here, but pre market high here is about nine forty. Yeah, pre market high is nine forty, and so I had a starter here like at like 918 or something like that. And my goal was to add, you know, I'm going to cut it if it just blows 950, but if it rejects 950, I'm going to add there. Now, a lot of people ask me when I did this, was your order already there? And I'm going to tell you, my order was not already at 950, but I had planned on shorting it at 950. I just wanted to make sure that it didn't blow straight through pre-market high. The set, what I wanted to do was wait for a slight hesitation at 950 and then I put the order back at 947 or 944 or something like that. So I actually waited for it to reject first and once it told me that it was rejecting, you know, like the pre-market high was was it looking like a duck it spikes up that's where i wanted to see it act like a duck and the second it started to act like a duck i felt like i had a duck right i felt like the resistance was gonna hold the second it rejected 950 i then put the order there so it's kind of a half and half fantasy order but in the open when the volatility is so great i don't really want to be just throwing risk out there right like i mean especially for a new trader fantasy orders are good but at the open, fantasy orders can, like at the open, the volatility can truly just yeah. break your expectation of range, especially when, when we're in this market, um, everything just going absolutely nuts with these 500% runners. Yeah, I can rip and teleport literally everywhere. So literally, yeah. I had a half and half of a fantasy order here, right? I put a starter on the feeler just in case it wants to pop and die. At least I get something. That's like the little FOMO entry. But, you know, the, the difference between this is, is I had a pre-planned entry I just didn't. I just didn't want to anticipate it. Where would be your stop here at right at that uh, candle? Right. So I mean, my stop would have been blow, if it blows through nine fifty or sixty. I honestly don't know where I'm getting out, and that's why I'm getting. I have a feeler. Like I know I'm getting out. I just don't know. Like I mean, slippage could get me out at nine seventy. I'm gonna try to get out at nine nine fifty or sixty with that starter. But once it stops and starts to stuff, and I put the add on, yeah. I'm, you know, still I'm gonna cut it nine fifty or sixty. Like I, I like the thesis for this is. Pre-market high is going to hold. If pre-market high doesn't hold, I'm not sticking around. Yeah, you have to get out. Yeah, Like I'm not sticking around. So it's it's almost like it pops up and, you know, if it starts to, if it starts to act as resistance, I'm putting the order there. And, it, and if it doesn't continue, peace out. Like I'm not holding on to that risk, especially in the beginning of the day. And so, of course, I, you know, like me, I just like full dollar wash targets. That's very classic of me. You know, it went lower. I don't care. Like I got my targets. How has your mindset changed from being inconsistent to consistent? Yeah, my mindset. Yeah, like what? How is your mindset different from when you first started to now? Like, I mean, it's it's really different. You know, when I first when I was uh, inconsistent, like basic. I don't want to swear, but my mindset is pretty fucked, right? I mean, I don't have a process. Uh, it's like uh, you know, I'm trading everything that uh, you know. Uh, like trade on a fly just i'm just trading everything that moves so that's basically but for now like when being consistent like you know you found something that's working for you right you found your edge you found something that all right shit i mean this is the one right and i'm making money every day on this particular setup right so it kind of switched my focus completely like uh, from being able to make this type of money every day consistently due to um, compared to the other one. Like, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. Right. I mean, it's uh, like a show, like showing up every day, waking up every day. I don't know what to look for uh, like before. And, and it's like, uh, it, it's more like gambling to me before uh, when, when it started trading, but now uh, after learning the right process, the right, you know, tools here and in, in, in MIC. And I, I start realize that like, you know, I, I track my winning trades. Uh, I saw some commonalities and everything, and, you know, like on this particular setup, I made money here and made money there. But on this particular one, I made like the outcome of 100 trades, 1000 trades, right? And like, 
out of you know 100 trades i made you know like the winning is at least like 60 or 70 you know trades that was on 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 on, on the winning side and said you know that's that's pretty good so why i just can't keep doing the same thing over and over again like you know just keep repeating that like every single day and it's like i i, I like to to kind of think it about that way is like uh when we're trading right in the market i just think that there's money for me to show up or like, uh, you know, or just to pick it up right from the market. But you just have to time it right. Timing is really crucial. Timing is really important. I think Bao said on his IG, I mean, timing is what's going to make you rich, not knowledge. I mean, knowledge, yes, you can apply all that, but timing is really key. And my mindset kind of, you know, switched to that. And I have to be patient. I have to be disciplined, waiting for that, you know, entry right and like the timing waiting for that moment there's like certain window for you to come into the market there's money lying there but there's just like i i, I kind of like to think of it like a small window right and so when when it's open you put your hand there you pick that money up and it's closed again right you have to kind of run it's so that's pretty the the analogy here it's pretty much the same so that's my mindset right now i know what i'm looking for why don't wait for that, right? All right, I'm signing right. off now. Yeah, all right. Thanks, everybody. Right, right Thanks on. Everyone. Peace out. Thank you so much for watching our video. If you want to see more of our videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the button here. We do our best to post a new video every single day. If you have any questions about MIC or any general trading questions, please text Tosh using the number here. Also, stay up to date by watching some of our most recent videos right over here.